what's a normal glucose response? Well, so you want your pre-meal glucose level uh, and your two hour post-meal glucose level to be about the same, yeah. um, you know, or, or quite close to. You want to make sure within that two hours that the glucose level is coming back down. Uh, and then if you do have something a little bit carby, you might see, you know, within the two hour mark, another little spike up and then it coming back down again within a timely fashion versus diabetics who it will take, you know, several hours for their blood sugar levels to come back down. So they end up running chronically high for hours and hours because there's just too much insulin resistance for their own insulin to do the job. That's crazy. And you know what? It's so interesting that um, one of the most um, eye-opening experiences I've had with teaching fasting to the world is how many people will come to like my YouTube channel and they'll tell stories like you just said, the medications they get off, the weight they get off, and then their doctor gets mad and their doctor doesn't believe it. And they're, and especially if you're dealing with a type two diabetic. And so what I started doing, and I know you guys do the same is I started putting the links to all the science. And I started saying, send your doctor here. Like they doctors need to be more educated on this. Mm -hmm. And I think people are waking up now. I do get people asking me like, oh, we're still talking about fasting. That's still a thing. And I'm like, we just got started talking about this. It is a thing. So what are you noticing within the medical community? Are more and more medical doctors starting to embrace it or are they more or are they still in a place of fear yeah i definitely think so um you know especially when it comes to perhaps the shorter fast i, I was on this call with the, it, was, it was a private call it was about a, a particular patient and uh an interesting group of physicians involved uh, in this patient's care throughout north america and it was so I, I was expecting it was my first time i'm the new expert to the care team and i was nervous like really nervous going in um, I, I used to travel so much uh, before COVID um, and yeah. being in Toronto uh, that I was used to going heads to head with the likes of people like Steve Finney at like low carb Denver and uh, Breckenridge. And, you know, so I, I had it, but I'm like, oh, it's been a while, you know, because stupid things shut down, the stupid virus shut down the world. Like it's been a while. And I'm like, I have a feeling I'm going to get eaten alive. I was telling my husband in the morning and he was like, good luck. And when I jumped in, you know, everybody, they did not want to hear about extended fast. Sure. Okay. Um, but you know, even this, the one guy I thought I was going to get the most resistance from too, 30 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, go for it, you know, do it. Amazing. You know? And I thought, okay, this is really cool. And then when the, the conversation turned into nutrition, that got a little bit more political, uh, but it was, you know, really about real, it, it, the nutrition focus was on real food. It's not, you know, yeah. let's put them full of cereal, granola, bread, you know, processed and refined grains and other junk food it became more about, you know, should we include butter or should we just stick to olive oil? And like, honestly, this is such a huge advance in the last 10 years from, yes. you know, where we've been. I'm, I'm going to take this whole experience as a win right now. Yes. Um, so no one should give the butter a angry. <laughs> but, but. Right, exactly. Like, let, let's like, at least we're talking about fat, you know, so yeah. we're at least there. Do you feel like a, a, there is a benefit that people can get at 36 hours, 48 hours with fasting that they can't get at 15? And oh. how does somebody decide when to go into that longer fast? Absolutely. I don't think there's incredible health benefits of doing um, 15 hours of, of fasting or 16 hours of fasting. I mean, there is some for maintenance. So if you're out there and you are healthy individual metabolically and you want to maintain that good metabolic health there are benefits of doing you know somewhere between 14 and 18 hours of fasting on a, a regular daily basis um we know that it can help with certain metabolic cancers like breast cancer certain types of breast cancer we know that there's still some autophagy that cellular recycling for disease prevention and anti-aging happening we know there is some hormonal checking you know that is occurring so there are i think there are health benefits for healthy individuals to maintain but when it comes to a lot of us here in north america like you're not healthy uh, one of my last talks before covid you know, i was on a panel and nadira lee he said to me you know like about uh, pcos rates and i say nowadays you know if you're a woman you, know, you have pcos until proven otherwise you know if you're following the standard north american diet whether you're you know 10 years old or 85 years old um you know it's a it's a 
problem that can plague women. So it's complicated, um, you know, to to sort of look at where we are today and uh, uh, and say that most people are in good health. There's a lot of people walking oh, around yeah. thin on the outside but are fat on the inside. 